the Gen 2 Blade battery is coming to BYD vehicles, but there's a lot of uncertainty about what it is, when is it coming, which models is it coming to. So the reason it matters is because it's 35%-ish, more energy dense, and there's also another big benefit which nobody seems to be talking about again, meaning that your BYD car could actually be cheaper, technically speaking, 10 or 15% cheaper, and have 30, 35% more range. So it matters a lot, especially because so many people don't want to buy, for example, the BYD Seagull or Dolphin Surf, depends what you call it, and charge to full and then deplete it completely to get 320 kilometers range. So giving the Gen 2 battery to the Seagull or the Dolphin Surf would basically mean that you can do the same range but only use the middle 80% of your battery. That is exactly the comment I read all the time. Every few days I'm seeing a comment talk about that sort of thing. I literally read one last night too by a person saying he would specifically never buy a car that couldn't do that. And I thought, that's a very interesting point. So the original Blade battery was launched actually with 140 watt hours per kilogram, and then they actually made it in 2020 uh, up to 150 watt hours per kilogram actually. But we actually talk about the Gen 1 as the second one. So actually the, the one that we have now, the standard one in the Atto 3, for example, and the Dolphin is technically the 2, but we just didn't call it the 2. But it, let's just say that's Gen 1 for now. So the new version is 210 watt hours per kilogram, which is 30 odd percent increase in uh, capacity and it doesn't weigh anymore and it's in the same space so that's really really great so you've got to remember as well this is still lithium-ion phosphate chemistry not nickel based at all so that means more range without making the battery physically bigger or heavier at all so you know it's the same size 30 odd percent more energy stored in that battery that goes in your car so that's why it's a big deal. That's why everyone's so excited about it. BYD is targeting 15% reduction in production costs to make that chemistry or that battery, the actual whole thing as a package. So which that should give you more energy storage, bigger range. Potentially, they will charge you less money or they'll just pocket some money themselves. I don't know. Maybe a bit of both. And all of that is important because LFP batteries are already some of the cheapest on the market. Bringing that cost down even further gives BYD even more room to compete globally. So BYD have kept its top priority safety, which is interesting, isn't it? The new battery has improved thermal stability, stronger crash protection and better internal structure. It still passes the nail penetration tests. But the one thing that's changing in China is the new law surrounding battery fires. They've simply just stipulated they're banned. The rules in China stipulate that even if a battery experiences thermal runaway or has a crash or gets penetrated, there must not be a fire. They have a lot to do to make that almost a guarantee, I think, that the batteries could never catch on fire and to, you know, publicly avow that. That's a big deal, uh, you know, because the law now stipulates that they've got to do that which is an interesting thing. Hello folks, my name is Ben Alexander. Thank you very much for joining me. This is The Charge Show. Really appreciate you uh, stopping by, thank you. I've been reading loads and loads of comments lately, L lots. I've, there are actually probably too many to read, but I really do try. Uh, this morning, for example, I was literally sat at my desk for an hour reading comments, drinking a coffee. So thank you very much for that. One thing that's apparent to me, I've heard a few people on YouTube say there's lots of depressing comments. I'm not getting those. That's pretty cool. I don't know why. There's almost an element of bromance going on in the comments. Lots of people are uh, like buddying up to each other and that sort of thing. It's pretty interesting. And uh, yeah, I really just like that, that 95% of the comments are nice comments. So uh, give yourself a pat, give yourself one of them, I think. I really like a good chat on the comments. And I don't just say that because it's good for my videos, but I also, I literally just spend time replying to comments back to back. So. Uh, if you've got a question, just put it in the comments. I'll get back to you. So Blade Battery 2.0 is being built at BYD's massive Fin Dreams battery plant in a place called Chongqing, China. If I said that wrong, sorry. This plant has an annual capacity of 20 gigawatt hours, and they're scaling that up. Obviously, this is literally a step by step, they're stepping it up. And it won't be limited to China, obviously, as well. Uh, BYD have got plans to roll out local production in Europe as well. Uh, soon in the next 12 months. So the batteries going into European cars will 
all, and I mean all, be made in Europe. So the ones in Australian cars, they'll be made in China, they're imported, obviously. And the ones from the UK, for the, for the UK vehicles, they will also be coming from continental Europe. They're not going to be doing that in the UK. So far, BYD is rolling out Blade 2.0 in phases. The first model confirmed to be using the battery is the Yang Wang U7. So that's the new uh, ultra luxury, ultra luxury, I should say ultra luxury, luxury pro max plus uh, electric sedan, but it's not called that. It's just a very swanky car, kind of like, you know, Lexus to Toyota, that sort of thing. So the car will be the flagship for Blade 2.0 tech, basically, and uh, with good reason, because it kind of needs longer range and performance and bl uh, the Blade battery 2.0 can offer that. So that's kind of why they're doing it. After that, BYD says that the 2.0 battery will appear in more mainstream uh, models, including the Seal, Tang, and some of the cars from Denza and Yang Wang. And then ultimately that will end up after so many months of rollout uh, in the Seagull and the Dolphin, for example. And at the moment, this is what I've been told, it's expected that 30 to 40% of all BYD's EV lineup will adopt Blade Battery 2.0 by Q1 2026 and nearly 70% by the end of the year. So let's talk about the Seagull because obviously this is, uh, it's got a smaller capacity in the battery than say the Dolphin or the other ones. The range is already sort of a little bit on the lower end for BYD. So this is where it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be interesting for a lot of people. This may put them off buying the first gen if they can wait a year or two and buy one with a bigger range. So this is BYD's most affordable car. It's cheap. Well, fairly cheap. There are some people whinging about the European prices, uh, but it is interesting. You know, 20, 24, 23, 24, 25, 23, 6,000 euro. It's still a lot of money. And it's a bit of a bitter pill to swallow when you know you could go to China and buy it for mm, a lot less than that, obviously. Uh, it's just launching in Europe now, as, as you saw yesterday, with the 30 kilowatt hour battery with no thermal management on that battery, by the way, and then the 43.2 kilowatt hour LFP blade battery. So as of now, these are still first gen batteries. So let's talk about where that's going. Could we see the gen two battery in the Seagull? 100% yes, that is happening. I've been told, I already knew that ages ago. It will be coming with the gen two battery, but when? That's the big question. I don't know exactly the month, obviously. I've been told through the Grapevine 2026 at some point. It wouldn't surprise me if they're slow with it and it takes goes into 2027. But generally, here's what I've been thinking uh, about BYD. They're usually pretty on time with things. So when, they, when they've when they said to me in the past, this car's coming out in June, you can come to the launch. It is, That is they're pretty bang on to the month. So when I get told something, literally every single time they're bang on with it. I think that's uh, that's something to bear in mind. And uh, they've obviously got to put these batteries in all the cars around the entire planet and they're, they're selling millions of cars. They're aiming for four million something this year. So it's a big deal. So if you're buying the Seagull in the next year or two, it'll probably be the original blade, uh, blade battery. But if it's in a you know, year and a half, two years, it's probably gonna be the Gen 2. Just You can think of it like that. So BYD is building its first European factory in a place in Hungary called Zeged, with production kicking off by the end of 2025. So at the end of this year, they will be making cars in Europe, selling them in, in, uh, in, in Europe, basically. So this plant uh, is focused first on assembling the Atto 3, first and foremost, Dolphin, Seal, and then the Seagull. So the Seagull, or Dolphin Surf, is the fourth vehicle off the production line. It's not clear at least to me, it's not clear whether those hungry built seagulls will get Blade 2.0 batteries that are made in Hungary. I don't know that. I don't know if they're going to be making them in that plant in Hungary or if they're going to come somewhere else in Europe. It is possible. But what we do know is that all BYD models will come with the Gen 2 battery at some point fairly soon. It's just a matter of how long that transition takes. Obviously, it's a big process. But once local cell production comes online in Europe, that's expected to be obviously 2026, 2027. We could see the new battery show up in uh, more models here too. So one question people ask a lot is, why hasn't BYD pushed this tech out faster? Well, it's a good question, I think. It's a very good question. Ben's not an electrochemist, but I can do my best. Well, uh, fast charging, higher density and safety 
they definitely don't always get along. If you boost energy density in a battery, if you shove more stuff in it, basically you lo lose some thermal control. That's kind of what's going on, I think. And you've got to have a very fine balance of what's going on inside, but you've got to keep it really, really safe and keep safety the rock solid priority. BYD does take time to redesign uh, cell internals all the time. I've actually been to their plant. I know exactly what it looks like in their in their, their factory, and it's immensely big. I mean, it's mind-bendingly massive, and there's literally people everywhere. So you, they've got to obviously manage heat, and uh, they've got. I'm sure they've got some stuff they don't tell people. Like they've got to, you know, make sure that there's some rules in place, and they've got to make sure that loads of people, literally loads of people with PhDs, loads of clever people and engineers all trying to, you know, make the batteries really, really good. And then once they've decided on some chemistry, they've got to get that approved and put through lots of tests. That takes a long time. Literally, it took years for the Blade, uh, the Gen 2 battery. It, it is really massive. But they can only do so much work and modeling and computer work every week. They can't do all of it in in a few minutes it's not they're not computers they're actual real people in a building doing stuff and i don't know moving petri dishes and pipettes or whatever it is that they do so yeah blade 2's energy density 210 watt hours per kilogram it's right at the edge of what lfp can do without switching to something uh, exotic or uh, doing things like manganese doping to make lmfp batteries so they're working very close to the limits of that chemistry. That's what I do know. BYD has pushed LFP chemistry close to its theoretical performance limit any higher, and the chemistry might become unstable or degrade faster or just simply not work efficiently. So that's kind of what they're doing. Here's where we're at then before I wrap up the video. Blade battery Gen 2, that gives you 30% more power in the battery, 15% cheaper-ish for the manufacturer, not for you necessarily. That's just the, that's the dream, but we're not sure. Uh, it's been made in China and eventually it will be made in Europe. And it's launching first in the uh, swankier cars like the Yang Wang U7 uh, with Rolat expanding into the Seal, Tang and the Denza vehicles. And also it will go into the Dolphin and Seagull, for example. Uh, the Gen 1 battery is in the cars now until 2026. Hopefully 2026 at the end, you'll start getting uh, seagulls, for example, and dolphins with the Gen 2 battery. I can't confirm that. That's just what we believe. And, at the e and by the end of 2026, over 70% of BYD's cars sold will be using the Gen 2 tech. So that's what we do know. What do you think of the Gen 2 batteries? And if there are any electric chemists out there, could you please explain further in a much more roundabout way than I did? Uh, because I'm just not an electrochemist and, and I know it's incredibly uh, difficult to talk about this sort of stuff. Are you happy with your Gen 1 battery? I think probably most people are. I wonder, uh, you know, if you've got one like an Atto 3, what do you think to your range? Has it ever cost you, um, has it ever caused you any uh, irrit irritation? On one of your trips, for example, driving from Brisbane to Sydney or, you know, from Amsterdam to Barcelona or something like that. Let me know in the comments. I will reply to you. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I do hope this video cleared it up for some people. And, uh, you know, it is an interesting topic. It's also very hard to keep a video like this under 10 or 15 minutes. So I've done my best to keep things to a minimum. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Consider subscribing. And uh, you're very welcome to click the like button or the dislike button. It's your choice. It works both ways.